make a left Darius. Site the buildings on either side comprise Site 33. Now, Site 33 is kind of a good news story for our Navy team because two weeks ago, we got approval from the regulators uh, from the Waterboard and DTSC closing out this site essentially because they approved the completion report and all the work we had done. So this site is officially clean is that we're coming up to, and it's got, uh, you'll see off to the right here, the buildings, and there's an open field to the left where there was a lot of digging that occurred. So what did we find here? Um, we found a little bit of debris, and we found uh, a lot of utility corridors that had uh, some contaminants in them, mostly arsenic and lead. Now the debris was pretty low density, but the arsenic and lead contamination from from previous years of storing things on the site um, basically led us to have to do some major excavation. And again, we're done with all of it. It's all been filled in. The documentation took a while and we just got approval from the regular. So this site here, you can see it on your map. And we're essentially going through the middle of the site. Yeah. Yes. So there's this big field and then, and then the site extends the tanks. Okay, so if you come, come down here and then make a right there, then we're going to talk about another interesting site, site 24 that we're going to come up on. Is that site 24? So let me talk to you a little bit about site 24 as we go there because this is not a soil site. I've been talking a lot about soil sites. Again, site 21, the vessel waste oil site was groundwater. Site 24 is the major groundwater site on the base. And remember how I said bases are like little villages. They had to be little self-contained islands for the Navy. They had a dry cleaning plant. And the dry cleaning plant had, had some fairly large tanks with chlorinated solvents, right? Like dry cleaning fluid in them. And they operated for years. Those tanks leaked and, it, and the uh, dry cleaning fluid went into the groundwater. So we're coming up on it. It's known, you'll see it, it's a weathered plaque. It's building 99. And building 99, you'll also see a, a sign that says government printing office. Oh. The dry cleaning plant uh, operated until 1977, and then from 1977 to 1997, it was a government printing office. Huh. It had a couple of other uses too, but that's where it's what the signage says. And you can stop right here just for a second. So this whole site actually goes back, actually you can go a little bit further, Darius, because there's this building where the dry cleaning plant was, but the groundwater plume, you can go a little forward to the intersection. Um, you can see the groundwater plume. I want to show you how far things can go. Stop, please. Okay. So do you see the tennis courts there in the distance? Can people see that? The tennis courts there are, well, what you can see from here is the chain link fence around the tennis courts right. that aren't used anymore, right? All right, so imagine that. The tanks were in this building, building 99. They leaked through the soil column, right? subsurface through the soil, they hit the groundwater. When a contaminant leaks out of a tank, it tends to go down vertically with gravity, right through the soil column. It spreads out a little bit, but uh, these solvents went mainly down into the groundwater. When it hits the groundwater, then it doesn't tend to go vertically anymore. It tends to go horizontally with the flow of the groundwater. There's not much groundwater flow on Treasure Island, but all groundwater flows in some direction. And guess where all the groundwater flows in Treasure Island, depending upon where you're at? It all flows towards the bay. Okay, so face towards the bay here. This, the, the, the groundwater contaminants actually over time went from building 99 here. Can you, can you see where the tennis courts are? We have monitoring wells in the middle of the tennis courts that you can see, little metal discs in the ground. The groundwater plume extended all the way from here to there. Now originally the site was 20 acres and it had multiple, uh, what we call plumes, multiple areas of contamination in the groundwater, not just one. Um, and not just one contaminant. There were other sites here where things were stored, were stored like cleaning fluids that actually also leaked out of tanks. There were a lot of underground storage tanks in this area. In this part of the base, when you're looking out here, between here and the chain link fence, that's the greatest concentration of underground storage tanks on the whole base, on the whole island, was in here.